So let's actually do that. Let's do that with a little program here. Okay, so there is the loop. And let me just change the perspective here just to show you. So this is a loop of current. And this uh, purple vector at the top is the delta L vector. That's the direction of the, uh, of the uh, current. Kill the lights. You see this? And the red vector is the R vector. So that's pointing to the observation location. And so I, I use BSFR law. I say I delta L cross R for the first segment. And I get that direction of delta B, which is what we just said, right? And then I move to the next segment, and let me show it from this point of view, and you can see how the direction of the magnetic field, or the delta B, the, the little piece of the magnetic field, has changed, but the magnitude didn't. And I keep doing that as I go around the loop. And there at the bottom segment, we got the direction we expected. Okay, Keep going around, show it from this point of view, keep going around. And so we've gone back to where we started from. We add up all those delta Bs, and you can, you can kind of see from this perspective all those Y components are going to cancel, but we end up with a net, a net Z component for the magnetic field. Okay? So what would we get at the very center? Would it be zero? Would it be zero? What did we find for the uh, the square loop at the very center? Yeah, it was pointing in the positive z, wouldn't it? Wasn't it? It does. So, I mean, just look at the loop here again. If you're at a point at the very center, so this is kind of uh, this is not like the charged ring. At the very center, you actually do get a magnetic field for a loop of current, and if that's delta L, and if that's R hat. Right? Delta L cross R hat gives me a delta B out. But if this were delta L going in that direction, and that's R hat, delta L cross R, thumb points out. So everywhere along that axis, it turns out, at the center or even behind it, you're going to get a magnetic field pointing in the positive Z direction. And let's just do it at some other observation locations just to see what will happen. I pick a different location. This one's not on the axis, and so you notice that some of these delta Bs are longer than others because the distances are different for different segments, right? So when I add those up, I'm not going to get uh, perfect cancellation, and you get a magnetic field kind of pointing in that direction. And I do it for a similar location down below. And I do it for a location there. And notice, again, now it's really kind of skewed. The closer segments are really contributing more to the magnetic field than the ones that are farther away. And you get that direction. And that direction. And then on he this location, this is, ex this is a location very similar to what we asked about for the, uh, for the square loop. And we said for the square loop, it pointed in the opposite direction. So let's see if we get the same result here. You notice they're all either lined up in one direction for directly on the, uh, in the plane of the, uh, of the loop. It's just that, again, the closer segments make a, big, a bigger contribution in the negative Z direction. So when I add those up, I get a field, net magnetic field in the negative Z direction. Same down here. Do it again here. And then again, if I'm on the Z axis once again, I still get a net magnetic field in the positive Z direction. Where have we seen this before? This is a dipole, right? This is a dipole, only it's a magnetic field, not electric field. And so this is, in fact, a loop of current. It's sometimes called a magnetic dipole. Okay, because it produces this classic dipole pattern of field. You have a, uh, along the axis, the magnetic field is pointing in one direction. On the perpendicular axis, the magnetic field is pointing in the opposite direction. It kind of curls around as you look at different observation locations in between. Okay? So this is a dipole pattern of field. 
The, now, you can go through the BSFR law, do the derivation. I'm not going to do it. It's worked out in the book. What you would find is you'd get a result for the magnetic field uh, for a loop of current on the, uh, on the axis. So we're looking along that z-axis again, magnitude. And the result works out to be u naught over 4 pi, 2i times pi r squared, capital R is again the radius of the, of the loop, divided by square root of r squared plus z squared to the 3 halves power. Okay? Again, you can look at special cases. When we're at the center, Z is equal to what at the center? We're at the very center of the loop. That means the Z is equal to zero. Thank you. Zero. Plug in the uh, plug Z is equal to zero in here, and you find that the magnetic field is in fact not zero. Okay, just like we expected it to be. So at the center, we get u naught over four pi, two i times pi r squared over r squared plus zero, or r squared to the three halves is going to give me r cubed. Or r cubed, excuse me. And then r squared and r cubed divide out, and we get just two i pi over r. So we get a non-zero result. It's not important what, what exactly the result is, but you get a non-zero magnetic field at the center, just as you have a non-zero magnetic field everywhere along that uh, center axis. What's more interesting, though, is for cases when the distance z is much bigger than the radius of the loop. So if r squared plus z squared, if z is much bigger, this is going to approximately be equal to just z squared, right? Add something small to something big, I just get something big. So this is mu naught over 4 pi, 2i pi r squared over z squared to the 3 halves, or mu naught over 4 pi, 2i pi r squared, divided by z cubed. So it's 1 over the distance cubed. Where have we seen that distance dependence before? For a dipole. So it really does behave like a dipole. When you're getting far enough away, if the, if the loop is small enough compared to the distance, then it really does behave like a dipole, both in the direction and in the magnitude. A okay? um, couple of things. One is this quantity i times pi r squared. Pi r squared is what? That's the, that's the area, right? So that's the area of the, of, the, of the dipole of the loop. And this quantity i times the area is sometimes called the, given the symbol mu, which is a little unfortunate. It's, not, it's different from mu naught. It's a diff we're using it, doing double duty with this symbol. This is called the magnetic dipole moment. Okay, so just as we had an electric dipole moment, which was Q t charge times the distance, just to quantify the whole thing as one uh, easily measurable entity, then we do the same thing with magnetic dipole moment. Okay? All right. Um, I think we're going to stop here, and we'll talk. We'll, we'll say a couple more things about dipoles on Monday, and we'll also talk about bar magnets, ferromagnets.